our world especially our generation is full of interests there is hardly the purity of selflessness what is in it for me you are my friend because are we together i found out you are you know a lot of people and so i've seen that there is an advantage in being your friend Provided I can see what I can gain from you. It's amazing how that our pursuits, as spiritual as it is, has already been corrupted by the versatility of the lost tied to it. And so we go for seven days dry. What are you looking for? Lord, what did you give apostle? You will give me. And God starts asking why from the one. You never answer. Just send it to God. Why? Why do you want the power? I know why. Because you saw a protocol standing close to a man. Come. It looked good to have people stand. I mean this huge guy. It looked good to be a celebrity. And you just found out that since I'm not an unbeliever, let me use God to achieve the same result. What is in it for me? The language of our generation. What is in it for me? What do I stand to gain? Show me my court first. And so we carry that bargaining mindset and go to God and say, Lord, I want to serve you, but first, oh, let's define it. Am I going to shine? If yes, more than who? Mention the people who will clap for me while I serve you. Because there are people I need to prove a point to. Will they be part of them? And while that is happening, we have the energy to dissipate. But the loss will never allow God to be glorified. sell all you have take it away from yourself be dissociated from it don't go and store it every time in the bible a man built a monument and secured his life upon it god called him a fool there was once upon a time a rich man who built barns and put a lot of plenty please don't get me wrong if you think god is not a giver i will show you that there is a name the, the giving of God cannot be really received by any man. We don't have what it takes to receive all that he wants to give. So this is by no means promoting a life of mediocrity and failure. Look at those who gave him all. Every time people meet me, the number one prayer is apostle a double portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I'm sure it comes from a sincere heart. Apostle, this and that. I'm sure some of you while watching Efenathan minister in your mind, just say, I will dust that voice training again. I mean, if this is what it takes, I will go back. And, and you can discern the corruption. Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. God is not a fool. He is the fountain of wisdom. He must vet the purity of your motive regardless of the accuracy of the activities. While you are doing those spiritual activities, the eye that can penetrate and cut asunder the bones and the marrows, he's watching to see. Can I trust you? If this is his phone, he should be able to collect it without me feeling offended. When I claim this is your phone and collecting it becomes a problem, then something is happening. I have taught again and again that owners are rebels in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we don't own things. When you own anything, you are a rebel. We are stewards, the Bible says. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The reputation his own, the glory his own, the fame, the lifting. Are we together? John chapter 3 and then verse 29 and 30. Something happened in the Bible. I hope you know that most of the disciples of John 
became the disciples of Jesus. The disciples of Jesus were formerly mentored by John. And when Jesus came, I mean, he was, he was doing a lot. Let, let's start from 28. And some of the loyal disciples who were left were angry. And they said, something is happening here. John, Jesus is outshining you. Are you not concerned? We who are loyal, who have remained with you, fight Jesus, do something. And John replies, ye yourself bear me witness that I said, hmm, I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. 29. He that had the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiced greatly. Have you ever seen marriage? Come, husband and wife, watch this. These people are about to get married. And then while they are joining them, the, uh, what they call that guy? <laughs> the best man is taking the joining personal. That means we should suspect you. Your joy should be when they say, we now declare you husband and wife. But you are angry that your friend is about to rejoice. Something is wrong. Are you getting the scripture now? Yes. Please give it to us. He said he rejoiced greatly because the, of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, ah, is therefore fulfilled. May verse 30 become your heritage forever. That he must increase, but I must decrease. Let me tell you what decreasing means. Decreasing does not mean go down. Decreasing means that I shrink to a point that I am now in him. That when they look at me, you know the word decrease there for many of us, it, we think is a bad word because we mean get out of the show. That's truly what it means. But then the advantage is that by the time you decrease, God himself will find a way of ensuring that while they focus on him, they still see you. Are we together now? I must decrease. This is, please give us that scripture. This is a language that our generation does not like. We love the spotlight and there's nothing wrong with it. Except for the fact that we are so obsessed with fame and money and things that if it means kicking God out, let it be. I came from a background, you will say, when no one has celebrated me, Lord, this is my moment to shine. Wait outside. Let me enjoy my shining, then I come to you. Many of us came here tonight to receive power, wonderful. To receive miracles, wonderful. To be inspired, wonderful. But tonight God is searching for those who say, these are my reasons, oh God. But even if the reasons are never met, I am still here. Ah, I'm still here. I'm still here. I thought the breakthrough would have come by January. It didn't come, but I'm still here. Lord, I'm not going anywhere. To whom shall we go? You alone have the words of life. I don't have an option. I did not bring plan B when I started with you. It is you or I perish. These are the kinds of people that it will be as though God owes them his presence. They will call upon him and he will arise. He will adorn their lives with beauty and glory that will cause even them to wonder. Praise the Lord. Good master, what is the one thing that is left? You can fast the more, it's excellent. You can pray the more, excellent. You can do all of the things you have to do the more. But my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you this. Please hear me. None of these things will replace the place of genuine death and dissociation from things. When honor and shame does not mean anything to you. When poverty and wealth does not mean anything to you. 
when the applauds of men or the mockings of men does not mean anything to you, when all that matters in your life is Christ and Christ alone, you are a dangerous man on the earth. You are the kind of person that Satan cannot do anything about. It is never about accolades. So when God sees that your pursuit is tied to those things, he will give you the same instruction he gave the man. Go. Sell that which gives you a sense of significance. When you are left alone, come back to me. Many people never come back. They never come back. They leave and they go to look for options. But like the one leper who was healed, there are others who will come back and say, Master, it's all gone. The reputation is gone. I am willing, if need be, to trade everything away. I stand before you only depending on your grace and your power and your light. If you do not help me, I cannot rise. Whatever you don't give me, I cannot have. If you don't give me a song, I cannot sing. If you don't open my eyes, I cannot see. And God says, do I mean that much to you? He said, Lord, let time prove it. Time prove it. Lord, I need a child greatly, but if a child does not come, you are still God. A time will come when your prayer life has no prayer points again. Not because you do not want to pray. You are more concerned about your love for him than your needs being met. That you can go before him and for hours never talk about yourself. It becomes all about him. Lord, I thank you. If you never bless me, you are still God. If you never open a door for me, you are still God. Please listen to what I tell you. 